Welcome back to The Breakfast and thanks for joining us for Author Press on Plast TV Africa. We'll take you through the pages of National Dailies and uh, bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds across board. We have Chris Nwandu who's joining us, uh, who will join the conversation as we proceed to help us understand some of the headlines this morning. I start off with the Daily Independent newspaper and uh, let's find out what's on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. The front or the banner caption says... Federal government moves to probe Jonathan's government over P and I D contract. I'm sure you're familiar with this particular one. Federal government moves to probe Jonathan's government over P and I D contract. Says contract capable of undermining national economy. All of that on the front page of the Daily Independent. Away from that, Parry Club refund. Governors accuse Attorney General of the Federation of siding consultant against Nigeria. That's also another board caption on the Daily Independent newspaper. Current security challenge, threat to food security, Defense Minister is quoted. You also have Anambra Guber, Aina Kajos supplementary election timetable for Ihiala. It is not yet over, says Ozigbo, PDP candidate, that's Valentine Ozigbo, uh, that's on page uh, six of the daily independent newspaper all right so you also have uh, another caption here saying nmpc assures on availability of petrol cautions against panic buying emo assembly in picture speakers was in kennedy ebay as replacement and court jails ex-pension boss abdurashid minor for eight years plot to extend apc ketika committee tenure thickens Convention may not hold in December. Uh, that's some of the concerns, uh, you know, of the APC uh, ahead of 2023 elections. You also have IPOP Road Streets Market still deserted in Emo State. That's it on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, to the punch newspapers. Big one there says, Governors attack Malami over $418 million consultants fee say the AGF lied. Haste uh, suggests a special relationship between AGF's office and consultants, says the NGF, and also state resources needed for critical development should not be frittered away. Air Force officer arrested over a deadly attack on NDA, and in an update it says the Air Force is denying that he has been arrested or that he is in their custody. And also APC elders Lampoon Lai Mohammed over attack on Abdul Razak. Ikoi collapse building. Subscribers signed over $500,000 contract each. And um, also a 40-year-old Ogumbucha arrested over lover's death after sex. Quara barred from UBEC fund over 1 billion naira looting by ex-government, says uh, Governor. A few others on the Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, we can find their uncertainty hangs over new PDP leadership as Secondus approaches uh, Supreme Court. Cooking gas price jumps by 240%. Marketers halt imports. And Lagos tops as a state's half-year IGR reaches 849.12 billion naira. We can also find here 2.3 billion naira theft. EFCC customs clash on custody as Mayna bags 61-year imprisonment. Uh, the, the papers uh, have different years all over them. Nobody's sure exactly how many years he gets. APC, PDP, bank on runoff, OB, and uh, party alleged vote buying and others. And um, finally on the punch, uh, this I think that's all we can take on the punch this morning. All right, let's uh, check out the leadership newspaper this morning. Talks about the Anambra supplementary poll, APC, PDP, banks on 148,000 Ihela voters to overturn Saludo's lead. And the question is, how can this be? Uh, that's on page four. Hopeful of Oshun Kanu magic. Forget Ihela is our stronghold, Abga is also quoted to say. We're watching, says Ohanese. Civil society calls for transparency. Aineka just voting timeline. Echoes imposes sanction on Mali. Court jails minor, eight years for pension fraud. And you also have 100, I beg your pardon, 418 million parry, uh, club deduction illegal. Governors reply, Attorney General of the Federation. 
and that's it uh, this morning. But just before we move away from the leadership, stakeholders recommend urgent overhaul of power sector and six emo lawmakers impeach speaker. Uh, this uh, some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. And now to the Daily Trust newspapers. Pensioners chair as Mena bags 61 years imprisonment. Uh, act sordid, immoral and dirty, says the judge. Lampoon's banks for aiding and abetting and others con other convicts to reform others convicts rather to refund 2.4 billion naira and 42 houses. Petrol price, Nemasa NPA flouting presidential directives, uh, marketers. IGR Lagos leads as FCT beats Rivers, Kano, and 33 others. Also, federal government and governors in fresh battle over 172 billion naira Paris Club deductions. Supplementary poll, Soludo, Ozigbo battle for Ihiala today. Nigeria's IDP's figure to hit 3 million, says the federal government. Those are the stories on the Daily Trust. Good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN News. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. All right. I'm sure you're excited to talk of the Anambra elections and see how, you know, basically react to how things have turned out. Uh, supplementary elections from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today. Uh, Valentine Ozigbo is complaining on social media. I read that early this morning. And, uh, of course, uh, there's also allegations of rigging here and there. Um, what are your thoughts? Yes, uh, I'm excited um, about the election uh, last weekend in Anambra State. And uh, despite all the additions that um, um, the streets of Anambra will be littered with uh, human tops and corpses and rest of them uh, due to the high level of insecurity in Anambra State, uh, that election was very, very successful. There was no single shot um, heard. Uh, in any part of uh, Anambra State. And the people of Anambra State came out to uh, exercise their franchise, as it were. And um, as it were, as it's, uh, we have it now. And by the end of today, our first thing to work in, the final result will be announced and the winner will emerge. Um, that is kudos to, I give it to the people of uh, Anambrians for doing the natural, despite the fact that uh, just as we predicted, there was going to be voters' apathy. Um, if you see what is coming out of the various and the numbers, um, it wasn't high enough um, at some point, less than 30 percent um, voters turn out uh, as against uh, registered voters. So, but it was expected because uh, people seem to value their life um, more than going out to vote. Um, despite uh, the last minute announcement by High Court that they are not going to disrupt the election and the rest of them, but you will see that security played a huge role in that election and that at the end of it, so whoever imagines, uh, whether we can say that she truly represents um, the totality of the people, um, both of the people of Anambra State is neither here nor there. But definitely, the most important thing for me is that that election was conducted against all odds. The winner is going to emerge. And um, as it's true, it's looking that it's going to be the candidate of Abga, um, seems to be cruising home by the last result. Uh, the one, one was released yesterday, 20 local governments have been released. Abga had um, the victorious in it is the uh, local government, um, uh, PDP won and YPP won. Iyala, some people said it's going to be a battle zone. There's nothing back there in Iyala. Um, Ozibo said that he has the technicality that he can still win. I don't know how he's going to do that. Uh, yes, we have a close to about um, 140 something thousand registered voters in Iyala local government. I think it's about the fourth or fifth largest uh, uh, local government in terms of uh, registration. But when you look at the trajectory and the voting pattern in all the 20 local government areas, I don't think that any local government has got more than 20,000. I, I doubt it. Uh, and that is, if that is the narration, then you can as well must have, we can predict what is going to happen, to happen in hell like today. But until INEC announces the eventual winner, no, we can we can only but continue to predict, but as it were, uh, if Abga um, seems to be cruising home. And to me, it's a good one. Uh, why did I say it's a good one? It, it, has always, it has shown that we cannot, Nigerians are getting wiser, and we have been talking about let's shift away from these two dominant parties, the APC and PDP. 
which is the party in Nigeria, who seem to be taking Nigerians for granted. So if we can, if we have a choice between these smaller parties and the rest of them, there's a possibility that uh, Nigerians can have authority from 2023. Well, that well I mean, that, that narrative would fly if Abga wasn't the dominant party in Anambra for a long time. You know, then you can say Nigerians or the Anambrarians, as they are called, uh, have decided to move away from the two dominant parties. But Abga has been the dominant party for 16 um, years, you know, for 16 years in Anambra. You know, so it, it doesn't seem like they're moving away from anything. They are basically, you know, picking a party that they trust. Before Abga, there was PDP in Anambra states. Yes. The various Briefly. elections that were won by PDP before Abga, and that's what I'm saying. So before Abga came from, from 1999, it was PDP, and Abga came uh, when uh, 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 Chokwa Sokori, I think that's his name, yes. um, uh, um, came up with that party, yes. and um, they had the brushes here and there, and uh, he left the party. Um, I remember. Ujuku, uh, yes, Odmu Ujuku mm -hmm. became. Uh, the national leader of that party, and it became a rallying point for the people of Anambra. And from there, it took off. And um, you, you, um, uh, Peter B solidified that party, and um, and and it has always been like that. And uh, I want, that's what I'm saying in a sense is, if you continue to go through that narrative, you realize. Let me also remind you that I think as of 20, 2003 or there about, there was a dominant party in the south. It was in Ibom Abga. There was a party known as PPA. That party was founded by um, uh, former Governor Oji uh, Uzokalu of um, Abia State. That was his party, PPA. And PPA um, had two um, states in his road. I think it was um, Imo and Abia at a point. So that party was also growing up in leaps and bound and was almost becoming a dominant party in, in, in the southeast before Oji Uzokalu filtered away the. Uh, uh, goodwill and rest of them, as I'm moving from one party to another and rest of them, today he's not as, it's not nationally as relevant as he ought to be. So what I'm saying is that like, we can just continue to look at most of this um, um, uh, 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 two party. Look at in a, in a, in a number election, YPP won a, a local government, that is uh, Ifa Yuba, he won a local government, APC didn't even win a single local government. If you can build up, if you could just come within a few months, from nowhere and build up YPP to win a local government, then that tells you the, the, the story that we can still get it right if we decide to do the right thing. Right. We but, 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 but we can also not take out the fact that, you know, Abga as a party is thriving on the image of that that push out, that of Ojuku. And of course, we know the uh, influence that Ojuku has, you know, in the politics in the southeastern region, even as a country in Nigeria. So we can't also take that, uh, you know, away. So that's, there's a lot that's actually working for Abga at the end of the day. Some people would target the Igbo party. I, 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 if you listen to my uh, statement initially, I, I, I mentioned that the turning point was when Odumi uh, Ujuku came into the prey. I said that Chepa Sokorian was the founder of that party and they had issues. I think they had issues with uh, and some of the members of that. Even Chepa went ahead to form another political party of his own. I can't remember the name of that party. But Odumi um, Ujuku, uh, before Odumi Ujuku um, joined Abga or was part of Abga, he was also a, a member of one of the I don't know whether it was PDP or I don't know whichever one of the one of those dominant parties. Don't forget he contested as a senator in one of those parties as well. So what I'm saying in a sense is that yes, Abga have been resonate with um, the people of uh, Anambra and they've seen the part of their own. The, 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 the surprising part of it was that I was betting the other political parties to do very well, especially PDP and APC. But when I saw the result coming in that came in, I was shocked. <laughs> that a party like PDP that have so many strong um, um, people behind it, we just <laughs> we didn't muster enough that even Abia was winning in the local government of the candidates of the parties, of those, most of those parties at the rest So, but it's a good day for the people of Anambra State. As we said, the election had come out and a winner will definitely come out for a willingness for each hour. And anybody that's agreed by the outcome of the party has the right to go to tribunals and also the, um, to the court to challenge the outcome. Okay. okay, but let's just still stay with the leadership newspaper now. I know you have actually mentioned that, but do you see a possibility of uh, that magic that would happen? I know Ihiela, we're looking at 148,000 voters, and it is not expected. I mean, you don't expect that you have 148 voters turn out to vote. So is there any magic that, you know, that can happen that would make 
um, you know, upturn the lead and turn it to any of the parties, PDP or the APC, as they are, as they are actually hoping. The Oshun magic and Kano Jap magic will never happen in Anambra states. You can take that to the bank. What about, the, what, what about, the, what about the emo magic? <laughs> well, the emo magic is a, a court. <laughs> so, the emo magic is a court. The election was declared, the result was declared that the uh, 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 emo we obtained, quote and unquote, the Supreme Court judgment that upheld the, uh, the person of uh, Emeka Yedera. So the emo magic is the cause. So I'm not talking about the cause. I'm talking about the result as it were. The the result coming now. We remember what happened in in, okay. in Kano State. We yes. had uh, PDP was cruising home until that uh, uh, supplementary or inconclusive. As you know, that language has come into our ele uh, election uh, Bible now. Uh, inconclusive election. And I just feel that inconclusive is just a way of giving the breeder and giving some some people advantage. Uh, but you know, sure it also happened if PDP was losing you know, until that inconclusive election and, and uh, if he was able to decide um the eventual winner uh in Osho State, it happened it can also. But uh, the result coming up for Anambra is very clear. It's not close enough. And when you're talking about 18 local government already going to Abga and just one each to ensure each of the other parties. I don't know where they were. And I've told you that yes, one would eat um voters uh registered. But the trajectory from what we have seen is that you know, you know the number of people, I, I don't see uh, that huge number of people coming out in the year um uh, to vote. So but let's wait and see. Uh, you know, I always say that Nigeria is like a Charlie Boy show. In Charlie Boy show, anything can happen. <laughs> At any given point in time, but uh, do not say uh, um, uh, PDP, APC, or whichever party about turning the victory that uh, Africa seems to be cruising for now. All right, let's uh, see what we have on the Daily Trust. The big one there says pensioners chair as Mena bags 61 years imprisonment. It says also that uh, the judge lampoons banks and uh, ba rather lampoons banks for aiding and abetting orders the convicts to refund 2.4 billion and for two houses. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Yes, um, let me quickly react to part of the statement you made initially in the post of reading the headlines. You said that uh, well, there's confusion as whether it was eight years or 61 years that um, we thought uh, they were. Any, any, any newspaper that reported 61 years is right. Anyone that reported eight years is right. In law, um, if you look at the, the judgment, Mena was uh, given 61 years imprisonment. That was the judgment of the court. But that 61 years is to run concurrently. So what it means is that it has, that 61 year has been shrinked into the years, into eight years. So he is going to serve eight years. But he was sentenced. Each of the counts carries the number of years I was sentenced. So it, it happens across. That is part of law. So, but he will actually he was sentenced to sit one years in prison. But concurrently, he's going to spend eight years. What I've not confirmed now is that from what some of the things I've been reading is that uh, whether the eight years will include the years he already spent in prison, because at times the court can also give that. So if the eight, eight years is part of what he has spent and he has been in prison for maybe about two years, despite the fact that he has absconded and rest of that, you might see him just end up spending about five years. But it's not the number of years that matters to me. The fact is that he has been convicted of those allegations, very bordering on money laundering, embezzlement, fraud, corruption, and the rest of them. These are money of Nigerians, retirees, who went through the groups of this country effectively. This man was not even the he's not even the he's not even the chairman of uh, the pension commission. He was brought in as a consultant to be able to a, 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 there was some kind of disparity within the uh, within the pension fund, and he was brought in as a he promised to come in and be able to see some of the missing bring to him, bring um, together most of these missing funds and gather them together so that pensioners can have their so it was more like an ad hoc. Consultant, quote and unquote, who came in to redeem the, the, the kind of uh, slot within the, the pension um, and funds. And at the end of it, so what did he do? He now took his hands into the post and now started stealing to people's. Um, some of those pensioners died uh, miserably, uh, not getting their pensions and the rest of them. 
So eight years for me totally wasn't too much of an editorial for me. I, I, I believe that I thought that could have gotten a much, much harsher um, sentence. But if that is what the law says, that is what it is. But um, the other aspect of it also yesterday was uh, the embarrassment that issued after he was sentenced. When he was coming out, and there was a confrontation between EFCC officers and um, uh, uh, prison officials as to who has the right to take him into custody. I don't think that is supposed to come up at all. EFCC has done his job. They've gotten the conviction. The right place to put him is um, uh, the prison, Nigerian prison, and is the uh, prison authorities that have the right to keep yeah, but him. Where, where did the why. EFCC think they were taking him to then? Sorry? Where did the EFCC think they were taking him to? Well, I don't know. They should know that I was being taken to the prison. Except EFCC want to rearrest him. You know, as EFCC, the way they are at times, you can be released <laughs> by the court, and before you, as I just come in and we just see FCC, we just arrest. It happens so many times. You, I'm sure you must have seen that. Yes. And probably that's what they wanted to do. Probably they wanted to arrest him. But if you are going to rearrest, but it's not when he's coming out of court. He has been convicted. Send him, let him go to the, um, where he was sent to. Then you cannot bring fresh charges. If you have any other charges against you, bring fresh charges. And there will be someone to come back to court to answer for doing set. So there shouldn't be this kind of uh, uh, discrepancies within the government agencies. It's the same federal government agents. Yes, it's federal government agents. Nigeria prison is uh, federal government agents. So there should not be this kind of disparity. They said there is more to read that we don't know about. But the fact is that the guy has been sentenced. Yes, yeah, pensioners, we are clapping and cursing uh, and rest of that. But they does solve the problem. There are still some, it, I still believe that it's not just only men, and there are still some people within that agency that must have helped men now to achieve that. I want those two to be uh, to be arrested and prosecuted. I, some banks were involved. We, we officials of the bank also invited. Are they going to be prosecuted? They are just talking about men. Now. Some banks were mentioned. What happened to the officials that compromised their um, their uh, ethics and they were able to do the joining of men? Or are they not aware of what was doing? They also be arrested and those bank officers to also be in prison, they should go to prison, so that the asset is direct for those who also want to engage in this kind of um, 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 unwholesome activities. That is my own take on that. Absolutely. Okay. All right, let's uh, check out the Daily Independent uh, newspaper this morning. Uh, quite interesting, PNID is back uh, on the front burner. And it says, federal government moves to probe Jonathan's government over PNID contract. Says, Contracts capable of undermining the national economy. Let's share your thoughts on that. Now, somebody I read where it was stated that, I don't know, um, I have not been able to verify that independently, that $1 billion, is it $1 billion or $1 billion that I was going to be used to prove uh, the $10 billion or $1 billion, um, $10 billion naira, uh, behind the um, contract scam. Um, but I know that that was a court, uh, one of the directors of that company uh, pleaded guilty. Uh, I want to be, I think, I, I, yes, pleaded guilty to that allegations. And um, I don't know whether he was sentenced or not. And um, but, and also that I know that's a, a pending court in the United Kingdom court on that, this issue. I don't know whether that has been disposed of again. So, but if the federal government find a, a new um, angle to the story. There's no end to litigation. That's what we are taught in law. There's no end to litigation. You think, when you think that uh, um, uh, litigation has been, something can come up, and you'll be invited. Um, this is a criminal, a law that's criminal and civil um, uh, 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 charges. So this is criminal. So if at any given point in time, in the course of this uh, trial, and the government come up with uh, uh, new revelations or what we call evidence. Um, as it were in, in, in law, then the, the government will always have the right to be able to continue. But uh, I think we should quickly, uh, as quickly as possible, come um, and make sure that we be able to handle this as quickly as possible, dispose of it and rest of them and move on. But if uh, uh, I, I read the story that uh, since contracts capable of undermining national economy, I don't know what they mean by that. Uh, I don't know whether they, are, they mean that with that money we can we can revive our economy, or I I I, I personally you know bet. Uh, in other countries, if the former president like Bodo Jenakpan is found caught, he should be invited. He should be invited to the school. Don't forget what happened to you, Jacob Zuma, in, in, in South Africa. There were allegations against Jacob Zuma, and the man was invited and refused. And the former president, president also. Sorry. 
As a former French president also. Yes, yes. Uh, former president of South Africa. He was invited in prison. The court gave a that he should be invited. No, he was not only invited, he was kept in prison. That is how it happens. Nobody is above uh, the constitution of Nigeria. So I'm not, uh, if they are pushing this directive or uh, Jonathan is if they find Jonathan culpable in any of those contracts, he should be invited. And Jonathan doesn't have immunity. He is not a former president. He does not have immunity. So he can be invited, he can be prosecuted, he can be, he can be jailed. That is how it happens. And that is why the, the, the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution, uh, as amended, is the ground norm at the same law. So nobody is irrespective of whatever your position in society. You cannot be above the Constitution of Nigeria. So if there's an issue, as they find out in this, it should be invited and then it should be able to testify. But I think we should be able to get this wrapped up. Let us start asking what happened to the NDDC or NDIC probe. It seems that we've gone quiet on that. I know that the report was submitted to the federal government by that probe panel, and until now, a white paper has not been released. It seems that we are sitting on that. Remember the days of uh, off your mic, off your mic. They were practically off the mic. As far as that issue is concerned, is that the mic has gone silent. So there are so many proof um, and whatever that we continue to uh, that uh, we submit white papers and nothing we get, not get to hear about it. The next thing you see government doing is setting up another committee to look at the the, um, the report submitted by a committee and committees and committees at the end of it on African magic, as it were. All right. Um, now, uh, other bits of controversy here and there on the Punch this morning says governors attack Malami over $418 million uh, consultants fee, say AGF lied. Um, some other part where he's also mentioned, um, and that is with regards to the Paris Club deduction, says federal, uh, federal government and governors in fresh battle over 172 billion naira Paris Club deductions. Um, what are your thoughts? Until we see, uh, I see a substantial, uh, substantial evidence um, being pushed uh, forward um, by the governments, then it, I can just put it at the realms of speculation. Um, because even if you take it to court, you must prove evidence. You have evidence to show what you are, to prove what you are, you are saying. If you are saying that AGF um, is, um, is uh, compromising his stance and also citing the um, the contractors on this matter and this women then uh, is a big uh, indictment. And um, if um, it's, it could be looked at from whichever angle, like the permission, if the AGF feels that the name is being maligned, it should be able to sue the governors. But for the governor to have come out to say this means that they have certain evidence to prove their case. But it's becoming my own, it's just for some to me that it's becoming an accusation to many for the AGF. And it's not good for his person and his office is holding. This is not the first time that we're having all this kind of validation. Don't forget that during the MTM um, um, saga, yes. the multi-billion MTM saga, the NGF was also fingered. You remember who did that? I don't know how that uh, power he came out to deny. During the course of um, the problem that um, former EFCC uh, chairman, Marco Hart, the AGF was fingered. And so many speculations and the rest of them. And there have been so many others and the rest of them. So. Uh, Anybody that uh, that uh, that uh, sit on that seat should be seen to be a book board. Yeah, but I, I, I also keep bear in mind that he has also been mentioned with regards to the the invasion of Justice uh, Muriel Dilly's uh, residence, um, the MP, of course. So so it, it, it's it's it feels like a new controversy every two weeks for the AG. That is it. Don't forget that the, the statement he made about uh, uh, spare parts. Spare part dealers and henchmen and rest. There are so many. This is becoming unbecoming. Let me let me talk about that in my own language. It's becoming very unbecoming of a high-ranking officer of that nature. And um, it, 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 I think uh, the AGF should be very, very careful. Um, we say the internet doesn't forget. Even if he leaves office tomorrow, most of the allegations being leveled against him will follow him all through his tenure uh, and after his tenure. And um, what the allegation by the uh, governor's forum is a very, very weighty allegation. What are you saying when they say they are conniving? That means that we are in some way you you you, you seem to be gaining uh, from the contractors. If you look at it from the you know from the surface, that is what it means. That's what they are saying, and that in itself is put a complete shade on the integrity. 
But everything it, in the must do to stands on integrity. So if the integrity of the AGF is in question, then there's a problem. But as I said, the governors, if they are going this way, they must also uh, bring out enough evidence to prove what they are saying. But I, I would like to also ask as a concern, I mean, uh, is there no mechanism that is created to check all of these excesses? I mean, we have seen the fact that there's been several allegations, just like my, uh, my colleague has mentioned. It feels like every two weeks there, these are issues. Is there no mechanism to check all of this? The mechanism is uh, the box up on the table of the uh, president, who is the chief executive officer of the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian PLC, if I put Nigeria say as a company, Nigeria Pills. It is, it, 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 that is where we have leadership deficits. The president hears this, he hears all these allegations, he listens to them, he reads papers, he, watch, he watches Plus TV Africa. Um, he, 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 at times, also, I also believe that he goes to our, our social media and the rest of that. And he's also watching this program, as it were, uh, most likely. If it's not, the vice president might be watching, or the new officers of the government will be watching. It is within the government, the president, to be able to say, oh, for goodness sake, what is it? These are the level of, uh, this allegation leveled against you. They are all acceptable to the president. There's no other way. The only other way that you can checkmate the eight year is either one, through the National Assembly, um, through the oversight functions of the executive, inviting the AGF to come and answer to some of the allegations. Or, on the other hand, he's a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. The Nigerian Bar Association can also invite him and um, the, uh, the AGF um, to be able to answer for that again because whatever he's doing will also have a negative effect on the bar and bench as in whichever we look at it. So, and that is why some of us have also been saying that there's, there should be the, the office of the Attorney General of the Federation should be separated with that of um, uh, uh, Chief Enforcement of with that, that office should be separated completely. So, if we separate that, then you, the, the, the one will be occupied probably by a politician. And the other one will be occupied by a technocrat, a West, a sound um, uh, uh, lawyer with high level of integrity. But as it were, this, the AGF seems to be. We used to have also one AGF that used to be so notorious. I'm sorry for the use of the language. In the days of um, 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 Gerard, there used to be one guy called Andoka. I'm sure you remember his name. Yes. You remember Andoka very well. Yes. You saw what Andoka did during the time of uh, the death of, uh, uh, of uh, Gerard. He almost practically became the de facto um, uh, president of Nigeria and was making it possible for even the vice president to be able to take up office and the rest of them. But ask yourself, where is Andoka today? He made that government, you know, we never heard of Andoka again. Have you ever heard of that? So, what people should be careful with some of the things they do. You just think that, oh, you're in the office, you're your, there's nothing can happen to you and the rest of them. At the end of it, so you'll be held accountable for whatever thing you do. So, but for me, the president has the sole responsibility to make sure that. The, uh, the code of conduct that was signed by the ministers when they are com um, coming in, they adhere to the. And does the, the president even have the mechanism of measuring the performances of his ministers? That has also been another issue. Most of what I was we said, if there's the minister that's not performing, get rid of him. But does our president do that since he came in 2015? Does it, except for the last uh, one that he just um, removed two ministers? I don't know why he did that. But that is where we find ourselves. Okay. You want to also quickly speak on the controversy in the Imo State House of Assembly? Uh, Imo State House of Assembly. Imo State is my state. Unfortunately, uh, the new speaker, Kennedy, this was my local government. He represents me, Obu, local government. I've been hearing a lot of um, strategy on what happened, how they say six people elected him, and what else. I think it's all politics. It's the politics between the APC as a, a government in Imo State and probably that of the opposition of PD. Um, but there are procedures for removal of a speaker. Uh, we cannot start going through that. The constitution was very, very clear on that. We cannot just remove a speaker just for the fun of it. So if there are some breaches and in which he, uh, the former speaker must have, then his colleagues have a right to impeach him. But to impeach him, there's also procedure and the number of um, um, office um, um, lawmakers that are supposed to be in chambers going to do. Don't forget that we have seen Latin that happened in Plato State just a few days ago. Yes. So, um, but all well and good, I'm sure they'll be able to sort out themselves. Uh, if it happens that the nigger was um, properly elected, then congratulations to my constituents. We also uh, you see that I'm also becoming a, a friend of a, a, a speaker, as it were, good and good, but 
Um, I'm sure that the people of Imo State will be able to sort out that. But uh, I think that is politics playing in, in, in Imo State. And um, the ruling party in itself is trying to really put on to um, consolidate all this power. Um, and if there's, a, if, if there's a problem between the governor and the House of Assembly, there will always be issues. That means a lot of don't, don't forget what happened in Edo State. That for months or even for years, you have you remember what happened to yeah. Governor Basaki and the Edo State House of Assembly. If there's no harmony between the two arms of government, then progress uh, will be hindered. But I hope and I pray that and the people of Edo State get it right and um, they move ahead. Um, uh, with the state of assembly, so that the governance which the uh, governor promised and the people, dividends of democracy, as it were, can truly get to emulate, as it were. Okay, uh, let's see if we still have time and uh, talk about the ruling party, the APC. Uh, it feels like the crisis is thickening in the APC as there's a plot to extend the APC Kataka Committee tenure. Now, uh, following that, there's, they're also saying that the convention may not hold in December. And this is a ruling party. 2023 is, uh, you know, uh, forthcoming. What do you think? APC, APC, APC. I think I mentioned it three times. APC <laughs> seems to be swinging from one controversy to another. But it's expected, um, most often than not, when you have a government in power, um, they tend to get over bloated by ego and the rest of them and a, a, a lot of controversies have And that is why I commend the PDP. Uh, the last convention held by the PDP, they did a very good job. Um, whether you like it or not, yes, most of the candidates were come by concession, but they came out smoking. And a lot of people believe that once that, after that uh, uh, convention that a, a PDP was going to blow out, they never did. Probably they blew out when they decide on the um, uh, the presidential candidate of the party um, in the next few months. And I think ABC should get this out together. Um, a lot of controversies. In the last um, uh, congresses they had, state congresses, they were fashioned in practically all the states. Name the states. No single state that you didn't have passion. And they set up a, a, reconcil a reconciliation committee. That con reconciliation committee have gone to work. But it seems it's not working. Is it in a Delta state where you have uh, uh, the minister, um, Pastor Kiyamon, uh, fighting the GSP, uh, the deputy senior president? Or is it in Lagos? Lagos are four places that you think that you have. It's a stronghold of PDP. There are two personal chairmen who put an approach. Um, and you go to a show. So many of the states, and that has always been so. And um, I don't know why a critical committee, um, that that critical committee, if you listen to the judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of Kondo State, that ethical committee almost cost on those states that um, that judgment. They say that if that ethical committee had been joined in that suit, uh, that APC would have lost um, um, on those states um, at that judgment. But I hope they'll get their hands together. But it seems that everything is pointing to, uh, to 2023. Everybody's trying to see what they can grab and position themselves properly towards 2023. And that is why they are finding themselves where they are. But if we, from my own outsider, I would just think that the Catholic Committee should just come, um, um, put up the convention, let them elect um, their their leaders. They just have barely less than two years to go to 2020 election. And by now, they should be putting their hands together and the people want to retain power. They should also forget that they are, they are talisman, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Bari, will not be on that ballot come 2023. He has been the rallying point. For them, why they are going to be winning the presidents without Buhari in 20. I don't know which candidate will become and command that kind of respect and followership that Buhari. So it is right time, and they come together, and including the president, who is a member of the of the party, should be able to rally his party right now so that they can focus towards 2023. All right, uh, Chris Wandu, I think we can wrap up here. Thank you very much for your time uh, this Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll be following up on uh, the elections in Anambra and hopefully bring you up. Uh, uh, to speak uh, about you know how it turns out at the end of today. Thank you very much for having. Do have a nice. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for joining.